Hello once again my friends, it's your buddy Nekumor here, and I'm making a video that I should have made about a month ago. <laughs> In case you didn't realize, I was on a little bit of a hiatus from YouTube, if you want to keep up with what I'm doing, make sure to follow my Twitter. <coughs> but that little hiatus is over, and now I want to take a quick look at the videos that we made in 2017. So without further ado, let's take a look. Okay, so the first video we did was Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening. I wanted to start off the new year with the first game that had ever gotten me into video gaming, and I thought, hey, perfect time at the beginning of the year. Start of the new year, start of the gaming, right? Uh, this one went a little more, I guess, technical. You know, I wasn't really sure what I was going to add to this game, because, I mean, this game is very well known. It's been done to death. A ton of other YouTubers have done reviews on it, I'm sure. But I just wanted to talk about it, because something about Link's Awakening really stuck with me. You know, it made me want to explore the world of gaming a little more. And, uh, yeah. You've seen countless times what it's become, so uh, I'll just save that, that explanation for you. So the next video we did was For the Love of Gaming Charity Event. Uh, that was put on by Retro Game Con over at uh, Play the Game, Read the Story in Syracuse. Uh, just basically went over what the charity events and or what the board game days there are like. And this one just happened to be Valentine themed, so it was pretty cool. Next major video was a review that was Fragile Dreams, Farewell Ruins of the Moon. Uh, this video was around when I guess I kind of fell into a bit of a habit. A kind of a bad habit of more so talking about the plot of the story of the game more than really touching on the controls. I mean, I did keep with reviewing the controls, but at the same time, it just kind of felt like it was really missing something. I had a lot of fun swallowing glue, which I want you guys to know was actually two cleaned out Elmer's glue bottles filled up with uh, like heavy cream or something like that. Just something that wasn't actually going to you know, ruin my insides. Don't eat Tide Pods on a related note. I know that it's kind of a big meme right now, just don't do it. Anyway, Fragile Dreams was one of those games that was really hyped up to me and I thought, hey, this is gonna be a perfect opportunity to actually play the game for the first time and make a proper review of it, going in with absolutely no knowledge of what this game was. And uh, yeah, I was disappointed. Next video we did was the first episode of Geeky Gluttony. We had found these Pokemon fruit juice packets at a local Asia food market and uh, decided to do an on the spot review and it kind of, I guess, took a little bit of inspiration from Ashens, which if you don't know who Ashens is, he's a British dude with a brown couch and he eats old food and reviews various things. I, I don't know, he's funny. I don't know how else to say him. The next major video would have been No More Heroes, which was another review. This was another one of those games that on my, like, I knew about it, I understood what it was, but I'd never really played it before. And I figured, hey, this is a good time to do it. I just got No More Heroes, so let's play the game and uh, make a full video on it. And I absolutely do not regret doing that. No More Heroes is a lot of fun. Uh, I mean what I said in the review though, it starts to feel stale after a while. I've been told by a bunch of people, both in comment section and on like Twitter and whatnot, that the second game clears up all the problems that I talked about in that game. Uh, still haven't gotten it, but I would like to get around to it at some point. Uh, no More Heroes 3 for the Switch. I'm pretty sure that was announced. So, uh, you know, I guess now's a good time to pick it up. We did another episode of Geeky Gluttony, which was talking about the Pokemon card uh, packs that were in the Cinnamon Toast Crunch cereal. And uh, I'd been getting into Pokemon card collecting again, and, you know, I've been watching a bunch of videos online of card openings and whatnot. And it was really exciting to me, and I wanted to try it out here and there. Uh, I think, I don't know if this was the first video I'd done, but it was the first video that I uploaded. And, uh, you know, it was pretty cool. I, uh,. Maybe it maybe, maybe went on a little longer than it should have. My setup was really sloppy, and if I continue to do card openings, I want to make sure I have a proper setup for it. But uh, yeah, if you're interested in seeing uh, Pokemon card openings, that's the first video that I did of it. Next three videos were kind of technical videos on how to Let's Play. I had a couple of friends who were interested in getting started in Let's Playing, and they were like, how do I do it? And I was like, okay, I'll fill my, my little setup, because I'd been doing Let's Plays for a little while at that point. Um, I guess you could say that the Let's Plays kind of replaced the time that I could have been putting into making new episodes for the show. But anyway, I went over what equipment I have, how I do it, you know, the timing. Just if, if you're interested in Let's Playing, just go ahead and check these videos out. Uh, first video is, you know, equipment that you need for console, uh, microphone, all that good stuff. Second video is basic editing. You know, you don't have to go above and beyond when you're editing your videos. Just simply putting them together and making a cohesive video is more than enough. I know some people like to go above and beyond. There's nothing wrong with that, but don't don't go in thinking that you're going to be able to do all the advanced stuff right away. It, it takes time and practice. And I know that sounds silly, uh, but 
like any good craft, editing takes practice. I've been doing it for a really long time, and I'm still not where I would like to be. Next video was another Pokemon card opening. It was the Shining Legends pin collection box. Uh, not much to say about it. I open up Pokemon cards, I get a couple of good cards, I freak out a little bit. It's good time. Good time, right? The next video was the last review that I did for the year. And this is when my hiatus from YouTube started for a little bit. Uh, it was my Halloween episode, and if you saw last year's Halloween episode, you know that I like to go maybe a little bit more ham sandwich when, uh, when these holiday specials come around. So, naturally, I tried my best to take the reviews back to the roots, talking about control, mechanics, you know, not giving you the whole plot of the story or giving you a video walkthrough. And from that spawned my review for Fatal Frame Maiden of the Black Water. This game, I've played Fatal Frame 2, I've played Fatal Frame, I believe, 4. This is technically 5 in the series. And this one, far and away, at least to me, was so different from the other games that it was it was a little it was a little bit easier to make a review for this, but I wanted kind of like we did with Silent Hill, right? Where I was doing the review and then suddenly my power or my recording studio loses power or whatever, and then the darkness comes and you know, I wanted to do a little more than that. And I had so much help from Zach, Kayla, Mitch, Janine, Heather. It was it was really really easy to you know figure out how I wanted it to do how, how I wanted it to work and they were they were really helpful in you know giving ideas or you know doing some impromptu lines here and there that I didn't even think about and it just really I think really made that episode something special and I'm looking forward to doing more episodes uh, maybe a little laid back because that was a lot of work in that and as much fun as that video was to do it was a ton of work like I spent most of, I want to say, I want to say the end of August, most of September, just recording and writing, and then all of October, uh, filming, editing, and releasing. And, um, you know, it was, it was, it was a lot of fun, and I liked it, but I, I'm looking forward to going back to maybe a little bit of a simpler video. I just started getting into speedrunning towards the end of the year. I've always wanted to speedrun Zone of the Enders, uh, or, you know, similar games, and I finally got off my ass and was like, okay, it's time to start speedrunning. And I have to say, it's become quite... I don't want to say an obsession, because I've only done a couple of attempts of Zone of the Enders and haven't tried anything else yet. I'll put my Twitch channel in the description below if you want to come hang out. Um, I have some plans for that in the future, but I, I, I do, like I said, I'm looking forward to getting back to making videos here. And then the last couple of videos we did were Retro Game Con 2017. Uh, I interviewed the con-goers, asking them what game desperately needs a modern remaster. Got some really interesting answers, had a couple of duplicate answers, which I expected, but didn't really think it was going to happen as qu as often or as quickly as it did. Uh, also had a chat with Billy Time, Retro Game Con 2017. You might see him in a little bit on the channel, who knows? And yeah, he gave me one of the coolest presents ever. He gave me a copy of his game Super Billy Time 2, a hard copy for the Super Nintendo. And I'm not saying anything, but I might have been playing it and taking some notes. All right, and that about covers all the videos that we did 2017. Maybe not as productive as 2016, but I want to change that for this year. I have a lot of content, a lot of plans, getting ready to go for the whole year of 2018. And I hope you guys stick around with me. Let's have some fun, eh? So, whatever you do, stay awesome. Don't do anything that I wouldn't do. And I will catch you in the next one.